what I'm trying to do is just put together a little bit of a presentation. Um, I was speaking to Lee and Jay before, I'm saying like, it helped me create a little bit more direction. I, mean, I sent the form out so I know what I'm getting myself in for on the day. And I know maybe I can come a bit better prepared, but I also wanted to be a little bit more of an open discussion as well, just because there's some questions on here I thought were great questions. All of them were great questions, um, but I don't know everything. And I hope that coaches don't think they know everything because as we know, that might be a point where you may stop learning, okay? Um, so there is a couple of things in here that I've wrote down. You might not agree with it. Let me know, tell me why. Yeah, I'm open, open-minded, open to discussion. Let me know what you've done with it. Let me know your experiences. You're all, most of us are, are coaches in here. So let's sort of get together and bang our heads together. Let's get started. So programmer 101, uh, filter through the bullshit. There's a lot of bullshit, a lot of bullshit. What does that come down to? Maybe social media, maybe not knowing what to do because there's that much information. Anyone ever feel information overhauled? Yeah, that programming, this programming, that nutrition, this mobility, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, so I wanted to hopefully try and um, maybe just bring that down a little bit for you and walk out with a little bit more of a better understanding here. Yeah? And um, because I've, I've been there, I'm still there now. You think you get to a certain level, but it always carries on procrastinating. I'm doing this right. But best thing you can do is speak to others. Yeah, we know that's a massive thing. So any questions before we start? Good, because there's enough. <laughs> Let's work our way through it. So, first one, what is good programming? I've got a slide next to that, but again, this is something that I think, and it's something that I've sort of put together. You might think a little bit differently. So, open floor, what is good programming? 100%, yeah. If client comes to you and they want to get stronger, why would you keep giving them mobility? Funny story, I done a course called Functional Range Condition, FRC, have heard of it? Yeah, crazy, crazy mobility. All like movers of, kind of get the shoulder this way, how deep you want to get into the squat, it's all about joints. I dove down a rabbit hole for about three months of that. Stopped strength training, stopped everything, okay? Tried to enforce it on my clients. I want to get stronger, let's start with mobility. I want to get more powerful, let's start with mobility. Next to me is like, where are these clients going? I've been trying to force on them what I've learned, but sometimes not the case. Someone trying to get in here. Let's all just look at them when you come in. That's <laughs> <laughs> okay. Don't worry about it. There's two benches there. Should be perfect. Cool. So, Sam, Casey, yes. yeah. John, cool. Getting there with the names. So we were just talking about what is uh, good programming. As I say, my next slide is discussing what I may believe and what are the principles of that. Um, Jay mentioned the good answer about delivering it to the client's needs, okay? And I was just telling a story about how I once had done a mobility course and I was trying to force on everyone. Everyone does a course and you want to put it across to everyone. Yeah, what's, what's a course that you've done? PT, say. Everyone's done a PT course, yeah. I want to jump straight into that, right? I know everyone. Let me make this person do this. Let me make this person do that. Um, but that's a really good one. Anyone else? What is good programming? You've already got clients' needs. What do you think? Open floor, yeah. Give me an progressive, 100%. Yeah, if you're sort of stagnating, stay in the same place and you're not really going from, let's take strength, for example, you're stuck on 100 kilo squats. How do I get to 102? How do I get to 105? This is something I'm actually going to be talking about today, yeah? And then else, so we're ready to go on to the next one. Adaptive, right? 100%, yeah, adaptive. If you got an example, older client coming in, and you're the back squat king or back squat queen, yeah? I'm going to make you back squat because I love back squat. And now I'm 70 years old, being around the block a little bit. Yeah, it's, um, do you really need to back squat? Ask yourself that. Is there any others that I can get the same sort of adaptation or specificity from? The movement of a squat is bending at the hip and knee, yeah, and then standing tall. Would there be an easier way to get them in that position? Potentially. Just because you see a movement done of power lifters, Olympic lifters, social media, doesn't mean you have to do that movement. That's something I hopefully get across to you today. And then else someone, you said that then, someone else said something. Yeah, I was going to say, um, 
depending on like what your client is, if they've got like maybe they're an athlete and you want to peak at a certain time. Okay. Hundred percent. So a yeah. couple of good questions towards the back end of that that people have sort of asked, which is definitely a good thing. Um, and it's something I want to touch about because I think people have this um, what's the word? Understanding that athletes are elite. They are in a sport. Are they in the weight room? Who knows? Yeah. I've had athletes who came in and been really good in the weight room because they've had a weight room background a good training experience, but also had athletes who come in who couldn't squat for shit. Yeah. Do you need to give them a back squat? Do you need to get fancy with the programming? It's a tough one, you need to ask yourself. Yeah. But that's why we're here. So let's move on. I've got a couple of bullet points. Let me know what you think. Should be challenging enough to create stress. Through stress comes adaptation. Correct? Yeah. Yeah, yeah okay, cool. Should take athletes, clients, life into consideration. So adapt what Lee mentioned before. Yeah. Stress can be both good or bad. We know that. Yeah. Just giving enough stress and training to create that adaptation. Give them too much, what happens? Overload. Overload. Yeah. Crashing down. Ever had your clients come in or yourselves like squatted 100 kilo for five last week? Next week. Wow. That's not 100 kilos. Who's put them extra 20s on? It's 140, it's 160. Yeah. Stress can be good or bad, okay? Don't add fuel to the already burning fire. This is definitely a good thing to think about in athletes, yeah? So we'll get a little bit amongst later on, but what the athletes have going on more than general population. Like, I don't know the difference between people who's working with athletes or general clients, but general clients mostly have like nine to five jobs or some type of shift work, yeah? Training volume. Did you really need to be going like crazy like an athlete? Who knows, yeah? Athletes also don't want to flip side, they're still like people, yeah? They've still got a lot going on. Some of them might work, depend on the level. I know you work with combat athletes yourself, and same with me, same with Luke, a couple of people do. Some of them are still trying to get to a point where they can sort of live, earn. I've worked with fighters who are still working nine to five and training alongside her. Is that more stressful than general pop? 100%, yeah? So sometimes you go in thinking like people need a little bit more, but you'd be surprised. I had a conversation with someone yesterday and it was about if I move with intense for 30 minutes, maybe three or four times a week, better I could get more out of the person who goes six, seven days a week and trains for 90 minutes. But there's this sort of like marriage towards more is better. Yeah? Have you all been there? It's like, let's just stay in the gym for an extra 20 minutes, half an hour, 40 minutes. Connell, oh, been here two hours. It's happened. What happens when you stay there longer? You get tired. Technique breaks down a little bit more. Lose power, maybe. Lose strength, fatigue. Yeah. Start thinking about other things. I'm hungry. What am I doing? I'm being here for two hours. Yeah. I was a heavy, heavy crossfitter. And I know what volume is. You know what I mean? I've been there like wad, three, four, five. Saturday, we used to run competition class, 8 a.m. in here, this room. Yeah, straight after, strength class, 9 a.m. Straight after, weightlifting, 10 to 11, 11.30. And I'd have a shake and a bit of dextrose. What am I doing? Is that too much stress, maybe? Potentially. Couldn't put weight on for shit. What's the opposite? Bad stress, cortisol levels, we know that affects how you adapt. Yeah, how you create stress, adaptation. Could be bad stress. Yeah, cool. Happy with that? Yeah. Any inputs? You know, so like, say with an athlete, yeah. obviously they've got so much, say, skills-based training yeah. that they're doing. 100%. Say, fighter. When they come in, how specific with the exercise versus general for the exercise would you sort of want to Cool. That? I'm going to keep that in the back of my mind. It's coming up. Yeah, <laughs> top man. Yeah. Um, okay, should accommodate for limitations in movements. Don't try to fit a square peg in a round hole. I know a couple of years mentioned about um, regressions and progressions of movements. I know you mentioned about deadlift, Terry. Yeah, if you've got a client who struggles with deadlift, what we'd actually put across. Okay, this is something we're going to talk about. So again, these are bullet points. You might be thinking he's moving on fast with these, but I've got the questions and maybe speak a little bit more about them when we get back. Okay, we've also got one eye on the time. Uh, should be specific towards the goal of the athlete client specificity. Jay mentioned that before. If someone's coming in for strength, why you're hammering with crazy conditioning. It could be part of it, 100%, but if their goal is strength, make them stronger. 
simple as that. Yeah, yeah. I know there's a lot of noise out there. We were talking about social media before you came in. It's a big thing. What to do here, there, everywhere. Yeah. Stick to your guns. Yeah. Speak to other coaches. Should be progressive to continue with the principle of overload. We said progressive. Andy. Yeah. Keep progressing. Keep going forwards. But we'll speak about ways that you're not going to keep going forwards because we kept putting in progressive overload. If you kept going forwards, you turned someone like the Incredible Hulk. But sadly, that doesn't turn out. I've been trying for years and not really. More like, more like Ant Man. You know what I mean? <laughs> I like that. I like a little bit of a laugh, laughing at me. Cool. Um, but there's going to be roadblocks. I think this way people get a little bit lost. You get progressive overload to a certain extent. What happens when we hit the block? I think that's what a lot of coaches struggle with. Where do we need to change? What do we need to change? Where do we need to go? Okay. Final one. Should adhere to the recommended rest and recovery times needed to elicit the correct adaptations. Rest and recovery. You're building to a 90% of your one rep max for, I was going to say triples then, but I don't know if some of some years might be strong. Who knows? Um, one, two, three reps. You're resting 30 seconds going to your next set. Good or bad? Potentially. Could be good if you've got really good recovery. I haven't really seen it yet. But if you're lifting 100 and resting 30, going again, could be in for a bit of a shock, okay? Um, any input on this before we move a little bit ahead? As I say, there's going to be a lot of questions further down that everyone's put on a job form and I've tried to just group them together so we get a little bit more value from it, okay? All good? Let's move on. What does it involve? Good programming. Well, we've touched on it quite a bit to be fair, but this gets a little bit more specific to maybe like what movements do we include, what tempos. Time yeah, exactly, 100%. So let's pop forward. Multiple planes of movement involved. Sagittal frontal transverse, we've all been dropped that on our PT courses, on our degrees. Frontal plane movement, transverse, rotation. Yeah, up and down, forwards and backwards. But baseline of a good program will involve multiple directions, okay? Up and down in a squat. Yeah? Cossack squats, frontal plane, rotations, med balls. Why do we try and move through multiple planes? Because in life and things we do, we both move in multiple ways, don't we? Actually perform. Pretty much. We've got a couple of areas on the body that we need to give love to. So we predominantly focus on one. Over time, we don't really give love to the other areas. Some things might start to go a little bit wrong, okay? There is ways or things we need to talk about a little bit further into that, but this is, again, just a little bit of a brief overview. Multiple movement patterns involved. We've all heard that you should squat, hinge, push, pull, core, anti-rotation, anti-extension, vertical, horizontal. Give me a squat. Goblet squat. Goblet squat. Give me a hinge. Deadlift. Deadlift. Give me a push, but not J. Press up. Press up. Horizontal push or vertical? Horizontal. Horizontal. Give me a vertical push. Shift press. Shift press. Yeah. Give me a vertical pull. Pull up. Give me a horizontal pull. Row. Row. Give me an anti-rotation core. Pull off press. Pull off press. There's your basic program. It's as simple as that, yeah? There's so much you can do within that, and they're just one example, yeah? Of each movement. How many variations of a squat is there? Millions, yeah. How many variations of a hinge? It's a good thing for you to practice as coaches, trainees, whatever you want to call yourselves, yeah? To get a list down. Exercise pool, massive, yeah? I should have put an example up really, but if you want me to send one over, I'll send one over. Go to a squat, list as many as you can down the bottom. Go to a hinge, list as many you can think of. If you can't, YouTube them, Google them, ask coaches what you think. Pulls, pushes, there's your baseline. You could probably go for four, three or four years working through each of them in different tempos, different rest periods, different cycles, okay? All good up to now? Cool. Put a question mark next to this. Fun. Because I had a couple of questions. Um, I think Sam might have mentioned this about 
getting to a point where clients where you think they've got to a stage, advanced stage, what do we do now? Yeah. Okay, this is a big thing. And you might not agree, who, who disagrees? Anyone disagree with this? You can do. It doesn't have to be fun, no. Yeah, it doesn't have to be fun. But I put the question mark in just because you don't need to constantly change the exercise to make it fun, otherwise you go against every principle you've spoken about to progress. Okay. There is periods though where you can make it a little bit more fun, but again, if variance in exercise goes against the principle we spoke about, about progression, overload, yeah, actually going forwards. Can we have variance in other movements that don't really, not that they don't matter, but if we're pushing for the main one, I create more variance in like uh, accessories, yeah, little conditioning pieces that stick with the principle of what you're doing, yeah, it's a big thing, okay, but does it have to be fun, it's a big question mark, okay, let's move forward, the how to, let me know what you think of this chart, Brilliant chart, anyone seen it before? Yeah, okay. So, have a little Google once you get home. Um, this was created, forgive me for missing his first name, but John, do you know his first name? No, no, I don't. Philip and Chart, anyway. So, this was based on Olympic weightlifters, okay? Yeah? There's a couple of things we need to think about, but for like a general baseline, you might use this as a go-to for just general programming, okay? If we look at first left column, we got percent. Second one, we got reps and sets. Third one, we got optimal. Last one, we've got total range, okay? If you look at the percent, as we get heavier, what do the reps do in the sets? They go down, why? To accommodate for the increase in intensity. What do we say before? If you're lifting like close to 90%, are you going to be doing like 20 reps? If you do, it's not 90%. I'm just telling you now. Okay. Yeah. Third column, optimal. What is optimal? This is a massive question mark because there's a couple of things we need to take into consideration when looking at this chart. Is it actually possible? Which? To have optimal. Yeah. So this, good question. Based on this, this was used for Olympic weightlifters. They used optimal for the idea of when the speed was slowing down, when the technique was losing. So they sort of created that range for this percentage in these reps and sets for that to be optimal. It'll be working with Olympic weightlifters, potentially. But they may fit into general clients. You just gotta play with it. Again, this isn't the be all end all, this isn't facts. This is just tried and tested and give it a go, see what happens. Okay? Power speed technique would suffer when venturing out of these recommendations. Okay? A couple of things they don't talk about, like we just mentioned, them, but frequency. If we just done, let's say, 90% for two sets, two reps. Once a week. You gonna progress? Maybe. What if you've done it twice a week? Might go a little bit more. What if you've done it five times a week? Now we're getting to that stage where we're thinking maybe too far. Bad stress? Who knows? Yeah? Some things to think about. I'm creating thoughts, I'm trying not to give you answers. I want you to think more. You're probably gonna walk away with a bit of value, but you're gonna be thinking more again but hopefully you get some things written down and we go from there. Um, training age. This was done on Olympic weightlifters who've been lifting for the whole lives. Some serious, serious weight being shifted. You might have, I know we always get used, but John Smith, an example. Yeah, who's the other one? Joe, Joe, uh, Joe Bloggs, that's the one. The old example, these examples, where are they? Um, you know what I mean, no. Training age that average Joe Bloggs, John Smith walks in. And gonna, they haven't got an Olympic weightlifting background, they're gonna be training for maybe six months. Are you gonna apply that? 
More than likely not, but it could be something to use with a base to it. You might go, I'm, I'm not going to push him 90% because he hasn't been training that long. He hasn't got the training H. Maybe start him a little bit of a baseline at the lighter percentage, but that would mean I need to test his maxes. Something that we're going to get into a little bit later on. Is it worth it? Who knows? Any input on this? Cool. Move forward. Should we begin to the questions a little bit? Anyone know who that is? Yeah, I knew John would. <laughs> I was for you that. Dmitry Kolokov, have a little YouTube of him when you get home. Absolute animal. That's a one arm snatch at 90 kilos. He's got a grip on the bar as well. I actually don't know. I, I don't think so. I think that's more to line the center of the bar up because it looks like it's a commercial gym. But he's also got his own plates on, so that's pretty impressive. Just noticed that. Reason to put this in, um, possibly your question. I can't remember. Someone's question, but I know what I've done is grouped them together a little bit. So, as clients become more advanced, feeling need to be more specific with strength training for them to progress. I also put in their new ideas for exercises. Okay, so we might have covered your answer a little bit then, but let's talk a little bit more about it. Um, principles of strength trainer. What are they? Overload, need to be progressive, specific to developing strength. Yeah, we need these things. So can you sort of switch, I mean, you create more uh, variance in things like accessories. Yeah, you can create more variance in your strength movements, but what that gonna potentially do, affect the outcome of the strength. If you do back squats, one week, next week you do the goblet squats, week after you do front squats, week after that, it's like you're coming away from that, like, okay, I wanna get strong. It could potentially be that the goblet squat's good for that client. It could be that they progress from that. New people versus, or newbies versus people who've been in the game for quite a bit, you're probably gonna get better with anything, in my opinion, we should just stick to them principles, make sure it's progressive. Make sure it's specific to what the goals are. My first year or two training, I'm sitting BBs everywhere. Yeah, and now it's great. Keep going. Now I'm, I'm 10, 15 years down the line. Like, Jesus Christ. I just wanted a 0.5 kilo on my squat. I just want maybe half a kilo on my uh, snatch. I know 0.5 and half still the same, you know what I mean? Um, any input on this? So. One thing I was sort of going to say about this, about like yeah. movements, right? Yeah. Obviously, say like Olympic movements are quite complicated. So, so if you get someone in, say like they work with us for 12 weeks, yeah. would you maybe say not to do like I'm saying, a barbell snatch or maybe more like a kettlebell one? If you feel like that's easier to program? Say okay. you're in a barbell deadlift, a hex bar deadlift, that sort of thing. Is okay. that sort of like when you're talking about new ideas for it? Okay, so what are you trying to develop? That's just strength. And you're trying to do snatch? Yeah. Okay. So look a little bit more specific. Is that movement the best movement to elicit strength? You think so? Yeah, probably not. Yeah. Depending on yeah, depending. Okay. Well, yeah. probably with strength, we go back to. Let's go back a little bit. Here. Yeah. Most people name movements there that create the most force. We know that strength you need to create the most force to get stronger. Put into the most force. That's why squat. Back squat normally comes up, deadlift normally comes up. Why? Because there's those muscles. Yeah, you can load them the most. To do what? Create the most force? Yeah, exactly. But going back to that, John Smith, Joe Bloggs, goblet squat, he could potentially go to that movement and create the most force from that. He's not ready for back squat yet. It's going to take a bit of time. But we'll go to things like drip feeding as well. How many people or coaches here go to the first week of program and try and throw everything at them? I want to do everything. Let's do everything. Four weeks down the line, go, shit, what not left? What am I going to do? Progressions is something we'll talk about. Could you do a month on goblet squats for John Smith? Could you do a month on, sorry, month on heel elevated goblet squats? A month on goblet squats? Could you do a month on zombie squats? Could you do a month on front squats? Could you do a month on back squats? There's five months programming. <laughs> Simple. Yeah. Could be potentially a lot of easy. Happy with that? Yeah, yeah. Cool. 
let's go forward. Pretty impressive. So, as I say, we touched a little bit on that, but next slide just might cover a couple of bullet points. How do you know when a client is advanced in training? Potentially, yeah. Coaches, I. There's loads of fancy stuff in coaching, strength and conditioning. You might have seen jump mats, velocity-based training, and everyone heard of that stuff. Yeah? The simple two is like, let's do a set of eight with a weight. You get to seven. Can't do it, sound. That's too heavy. Cool. Let's take it down. And do eight. How many have we got left in the tank? Maybe two. Anyone heard of the RP scale before? Good one to use, potentially. These are not all facts, these are just maybe ideas to use, okay? Understanding said principle, you can create the variety and accessories, something we've talked about already. But there's no saying that you can't create variety as the client starts to get a little bit more advanced. How many variants of a back squat can you do? A lot. What, what can you do? Normal back squats. Back squat with three seconds lower. Back squat with pause. Back up with bands, the John, with chains. Yeah, one and a quarter back squats. Anyone done them? Jesus Christ. Yeah, variations of barbells. We've got a little bit more on here. Depends on what your gym you sort to of go to, but um, again, there's like four to five variants already. Okay. If advanced, there are multiple ways of challenging. Yeah, we just talked about a couple of things there. Yeah, rep, rec uh, rep records. Something I've been playing around with. Lately, anyone done the 531 Wendler program, strength program? Have a little look at that once you're finished. Pretty solid program. Um, with that, they sort of go into more hitting a percentage for an amount of reps. Okay, so when we're talking about how many people are fixated on just moving the weight up. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, but I think, I think after a while, when you start getting to that and the average sticking points, that's what I think I'm seeing about you know, bringing percentages in and stuff like that. Okay, cool. Yeah, something we'll touch on. I think it might be the one or two slides over. But uh, again, with this stuff, it's, there's plenty of things you can do within the actual movements and constraints around it, like the rep sets, tempos, rep records. Can you hit 85% for plus? Plus what? I wanted to hit five or more. Hit eight, great, let's go up next time. I only hit four, let's stay at that weight for longer. Yeah? Cool. Happy with that? Yeah. yeah. Um, understanding strength trainers is a lifetime game. Massive one. Massive one. It's not a six week challenge, no matter how much the sponsor dad tells you on Instagram. Yeah? My example. I ran 5 three, one for two and a half years. That is pretty much squat, deadlift, bench, press. I'm boring, I'm repetitive, but I'm strong. Simple as that. Not being cocky, it's just the way strength training is. Yeah? Exactly. Sometimes you need to actually think about or look at what your goal is, okay? <laughs> Come on, lad. Okay. Chris let me know, by the way, he was coming in, you know what I mean? I think I just let him turn up half an hour later. Right? <laughs> okay. Practical example, press-ups, how to make them more challenging or easier going off um, variations that we just talked about. Elevated press-ups, yeah? Keep the movement, the movement. Press-ups on the knees, could that get you to a press-up? Potentially, but you're changing some of the mechanics of the actual movements. Is it better to do a press-up here than a press-up here? Yeah, what looks more like a press-up? That one, yeah, do that. Progress from there, elevated, normal press-up, eccentric press-up, yeah. Ever done 10 reps with a five second lower? Horrible, yeah? Press up with a 10 second hold at the bottom. Five reps, give it a try, yeah? Eccentric and isometric, lower and slowly, hold at the bottom. Cool. 
Then you can just go back to the start and do a whole thing again, but I'd wait. Work through elevate, work through normal, work through eccentric, work through isometric. Flow charts, is that right? No? None of us are uh, data people there, are we? Like, you know what I mean? It is a flow chart, exactly. The amount of times I've got somewhere with someone by doing that, yeah? Deadlift at the top. Can he hinge? No. I'm going to spend all my time getting the hinge right. Yes. Uh, can he hinge with weight? No. All right. Let's get them regressing the movement to get about. What you need to do when I went back to the fun part before, I think people, you always want to try and get to the movement as quick as possible. But you also want to try and make sure that they're ready to progress rather than just progressing for the sake of it. Yeah. Stay on the movement if you need to. You're the coach. Don't be worried about like, oh, I want to progress. I want to move fast. I want to get to the weight. They, boom, jump to the weight. Oh, I'm stuck. Maybe we'd have spent longer to get more volume, more frequency, more strength baseline at that. You might have got to a stage where you could actually go forwards. Make sense? Cool. Don't spend too long on correctives. This is the opposite side of what I was saying. Put a certain I've done. Move them to the movement as quick as you think possible. Going back to FRC course I've done before. Yeah, spend so long spending time on mobility. Actually forgot the principles of training. Yeah. Went back to me, squat stuff, shit, can't move now. Yeah, because you haven't done anything. You've just done mobility, correctives. Don't try and beat around the bush with movements. Get done what needs to be done, okay? Get to the movements. Um, massive one, okay? And the one that we just touched on there, regression should be made simple and kept to the said principle. If you take a movement back, you don't want to take a movement back and then change the movement. Does that make sense? Like we just done then, if we're regressing a press up, but I'm not really involved in certain parts of the body that's involved in a press up. It's, it's not a press up. <laughs> Simple as that. Happy with that? Does that make sense? Cool. You need to keep overload. There is a tendency to make regressions easy. Um, I don't know why I broke client Paul there. Come to me mind later on. And I wrote 20 rep goblet squat challenge. Okay, reason why I've done that, easy. Regressions are seen as easy, okay? Um, I, I think it was Paula, I should have wrote the A on the end. Um, elevated press-ups are seen as, ah, oh, piece of piss. They won't get me anywhere. Push them with it, keep the overload. Just because you're regressing movement doesn't need to be easy. Push them on it, yeah? 100%, if anyone can do like, I don't know, over 50 press-ups normal, We'll get you to a box like that height, 20 inch. And I say, right, get 100 on that. Think that'll be hard? Think so, yeah. Regressions don't need to be easy. Still need to be progressing towards, okay? Cool. Biggest one, baseline, progression, regression. I'm gonna go through an example. Um, okay, baseline is a squat with Kettlebell, so goblet squats. Okay. What's a progression? Something to keep the movements the same, but maybe progress them in a strength element. Barbell squats. Yeah. What's a regression? Bodyweight squat. Bodyweight squat. Could you think you can do that with most movements? Remember what we said before about the exercise pool? Get a list down. Squat, how many variations of a squat is there? Hinges. Could you do the same with baseline progressions and regressions? Potentially. You've just gone from creating a, a year to two of your exercise pool to an even bigger, wider base. You now accommodate for people who can squat thousands of kilos. John? Zero. Never squatted in their lives. Yeah? Now you're accommodating. Yeah? Make sense? Questions? Cool. Let's keep going. Anyone know who this is? Steffi Cohen. Steffi Cohen. I'm glad Luke said that. <laughs> really, really solid athlete. Strong as fuck. Really strong. Stronger than me. Well, stronger than me. Yeah. Stronger than all the lads in here put together, I would say. <laughs> would you agree? Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Um, I didn't want to just put myself on these, but I wanted to dedicate the strength to different types of people, different styles. So 
Understanding how to manage intensity during the session and making sure intensity is right for the client. How to manipulate volume and intensity. We've touched on it a little bit, so now we've got a little bit ahead of ourselves, but again, we'll go to the next one. Okay. Simple tools, complex tools. Do we really need them for general population? It's a good question, okay? Um, simple tools, RP scale, which you've talked about. With gem pop, you could potentially use it because it's just a simple scale. That's a conversation that you're having. As well as all the numbers, and all the numbers don't mean shit if you can't have a conversation with the person who's standing in front of you. It's as simple as that, yeah? That's why it might not be fun because you're just hammering them in the ground and they're going, he's up gym and then, like, just doing me head and shouting at me like strength and RP scales and stuff, you know what I mean? Um, coach's eye, one of the most overlooked in my opinion. I like to get on the floor and I like to coach. I've just come from an undergrad and a master's in strength and conditioning. And that's the biggest thing that was missing, was being able to coach. I had guys next to me who got all the letters in front of them, in front of the names, you've seen them. CSCS, SNC, MSC, PhD, you name it, you got it. Put them in a room like this, like, oh my God. <laughs> you can't get your book out then. It's gotta be there, but you gotta have some skin in the game. You gotta be on the floor, you gotta work. So how you get better at coaching? Coach more, coach more. Specificity, coach. Yeah, cool. Um, log books, people use them with clients. Yeah, we're talking about like maybe marking yourselves and stuff like that. Put your name logo on the front. Tracy, this is for you. Oh, thank you. We're gonna track your workouts from now until well, when I'm feeling down. Ah, oh, I didn't hit 70 for four. Look where you came from. You couldn't squat 10 for zero. You know what I mean? Good things to have. Complex tools, didn't want to touch on them too much, but I just wanted to put them in there in case we had different sort of people where they were at. Um, Velocity-based training, that's basically just focusing on the speed of the bar. If it drops below a certain speed, people might think, okay, or coaches, maybe a bit run down, not producing much power there. Let's knock it on the head. Good way to, because we might do three sets of five, and could say three sets of five there, people get it done no matter what. Or the things we need to look around at could potentially be that. We might be forcing to do five, and by the third rep, the speed's gone. You can see that with the coach's eye, but can you get a little bit more of an objective measurement? Something in front of you to say like, 1.3, 1.3, wow, 0 0.5 by third rep. If it, it's potentially something to use, but I'm, I don't really use it. If you work in a science lab or whatever you might, I don't know. This is something quite new to me, intensity, number of lifts. Similar a little bit to uh, total volume in a way. Anyone used this before? Okay. I'm not going to touch on it too much, but it's something to take a look at. Um, again, give me a message and I'll send some of the links based around this stuff if you want to go into a little bit deeper. But I know I've got quite a bit to go, so. Um, understanding, so again, what we just talked about, that the body is not a computer, okay? You cannot just type in numbers, percentages, and it will perform. What we talked about before is how many stresses outside the trainer are involved, yeah? Come in the gym, three sets of five, 100 key. Next week, three sets of five, 100 key. Third week, oh my God, we have to drop it down to 80. What happened? She had sleep the night before, nutrition, argument with the missus or the husband. All these play a factor, yeah? Happy. That's one thing I've had conflict with recently, is I've um, got a client who's like quite obese, yeah. but like the life's in disarray, pretty much like cool. smoke, antidepressants, uh, drink all the time, and it's such an urge as a coach to be like, want to push for results, yeah. but it's no when to push, if I, if I came in and had a gone up for that, it might just tip them over the edge and be like, fuck this, I'm going on. What would you spoke about then? Could you have a conversation? Yeah? Might that help them more than pushing the weights? Potentially, yeah? And these are things you gotta think about as much as it is numbers, percentages, RPE, whatever, yeah? Have the conversation at the end of the day. And just see if you're okay to push. You're gonna get the person you work with who's always looking for a little bit of a way out. You know them, you understand them, yeah? 
but then you need to find also like, okay, is he or the okay? Is she okay? You need to understand this part. So it's not all about just the programming side of things and the technical side of things. Sometimes it's a little bit more about the communication understanding. Would you, do you set any separate time for your clients to do that? Or would you do that, say, throughout the session? So just as a start, like, how, how's your week been, that sort of thing? Or? 100%. It's when you come in the door. Yeah. Body language. John Smith comes in normally. Tommy, you okay? Ready to train? Next week. Where the fuck is he? He's already sitting up there on his phone like that. What's up? And then good. You might not directly ask them what's up, but start to work your way around a little bit. How's things been today, this week? If they're gaining your trust a little bit, they might open up a little bit more. The shit day and work. Okay, let's decrease the volume a little bit today. Let's back off. Yeah. It'll help you explain them why it will help you. I don't want to back off. I'm I want to push through. This is where the coaching comes in, the education. Okay, we push through such and such next week. It'll be hitting even harder for a downfall. Shit weekend again. Bang, there's two weeks back to back. We take a bit of a break now and take a step off the gas, off the, uh, yeah, off the gas, American <laughs> accelerator. <laughs> and then we can go up again next week. Cool, I'm happy with that. Exactly, yeah. Would you say it's a top fan like a balance between two then obviously like when it comes to, as you said, like percentage of people then, but also as you said, like the coaching eye, like getting, yeah. 100%. I've just had people on, uh, I've had people on program like the same program for ages because there's just other things around lifestyles that I know we just talk about like getting nutrition right recovery and stuff and that's something you're going to be trying to get across but like we said before it's a lifetime game it's a lifetime game so you might at the start because they're quite new getting to the stage where you're pushing them forwards the progression you're going to have plateaus so there's things where we look at variations and tempos rests lifestyles what can we change outside of that Unfortunately, we're not just computers, bam, 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 30%, 40%, 50%, 90%, walk out the door, done. Doesn't work like that, sadly. Yeah? But that's why sometimes it creates more questions rather than answers. But that's coaching. Yeah? Good one. Technical failure. Taking into someone's, in consideration, someone's, um, what's the word? Ability for that day. Again, we said before, John comes in the room. Feeling down, yeah. He hit five at 100 key last week. What do you think he hit five for today? Not feeling the best, mate. All right. Let's take you to just technical failure where your movement breaks down. See where you go. Let's push you to five. And if that's 50 for today, that's fine. Sometimes you push them too far over and that 100 kilos, it might just knock them out a little bit further, like we talked about before. You might be better holding them back a little bit and understand them when to push. Yeah? Cool. Let's move on. Happy with that? Yeah. Example, I posted recently. Um, this is where a boxing client, um, this setup isn't mine. I've took that from coaches who I speak to as well. Yeah, so there's a guy you speak to called Jeffrey Chu out in Canada. Um, and he created this high-low category based on people's lifestyles and what they were doing outside of the gym because it's all, it's all stress, good or bad, okay? Low, where I think the day's not too bad, where I could potentially put something, some type of training there. High, if I put training there, you could knock him over the edge. We spoke about earlier, boxing or any athletic um, sort of performer, even like general population. If you find out their day, could you sort of work around it? This is, I've never really used this for general population because I know that people have jobs, you want to come at certain times and stuff, but Again, you could use the high-low based on how they're feeling, yeah? Push them when they're not feeling, or when they're feeling good. Don't push them when they're feeling high, but you've got to be very, very cautious with that. Like I said before, you get people working around it. Um, it's a tough one to, uh, to answer, to be honest, but have a little look at the high-low system, yeah? Note that down, see what you think. Okay, let's move forward. Little example of manipulating volume and intensity for whoever whose questions uh, was that. But now we talked a little bit about but simple strength uh, templates. Guess not like three by five. <laughs> yeah, it's something that we talked about quite a lot. Manipulating percentage for a month. Potentially. Could even go longer. This is just an example. Manipulating tempo for a month or more. Manipulating volume for a month or more. 
three by five, 65% week one, 70% week two, 75% week three, back to 65% week four, deload. You can push them again, maybe months two. It's known as things in periodization, but I'm not even gonna get into that because it's all bollocks, okay? Go back, tempo, three by five, three second lower. You can keep the load in and increase the weight. You keep the weight the same and increase the tempo. Yeah? Manipulating volume for a month. Three by five, four by five, five by five, three by five, back off. Yeah? Loads of things. You can see how much of an open like door, isn't it? Yeah, program in there, isn't it? Potentially. Yeah. yeah. Okay, move forward. Oh, there we go. Okay, who asked me that? <laughs> I know it is, <laughs> but it's good because we have an open door here. We have an open mind. Yeah, we want to talk about these things, but it's interesting as well. I put that there because that's what I think when I hear this word. Anyone with me? Yeah. yeah? Cool. Anyone know what periodization is? Yeah. Yeah. There's diff I mean, there's a lot of stuff that goes into it. There's different styles. Um, but something we'll get through as we move forward, okay? Periodization being the organization of training throughout the year. Yeah? Split into macro cycle. Up to four years, Olympics. That's how long it can actually go. Train I'm training for four years with different things. So when you get to the finish line, you cry. Now you know why. It's four years, it's a long time, yeah? Meso cycle up to three to four months. Micro cycle week by week. Bi-weekly, weekly, changing the things. Programming being the manipulation of variables within that structure. Sets, reps, rests, percentage, tempos, load. You name it, it's in there, okay? Programming is a, a within the periodization. Periodization is the big outlook. This programmer might be more like the micro cycle, the week by week changes that you do. Like we said before, we just done a little bit of example there. Three by five, percentage, volume, tempos, etc. Happy with that, okay. Building a base, so whoever asked me that question, accumulation, building strength, power on top of the base, intensification, unload and taper periods. Is periodization outdated? What do we just talk about with stress? If you're creating a plan for up to a year, what the fuck do you know where they're gonna be in here? You're assuming that they're gonna be great. They're not gonna potentially lose someone close to them. Be out of a job, yeah? Get a bad injury. These are all possibilities. A long time, so. no. Exactly, exactly, okay? But I've used it. Roughly, so there's some, come, uh, some things in the next one. Sorry, the bottom that we, we can uh, talk about. Um, other options, concurrent programming, so doing everything together. Anyone here the, the force velocity curve? Getting a little bit, getting a little bit complex now, okay. Um, at the top is like speed, yeah? So let's say sprints. At the bottom is maximal strength. Heaviest backs, what you can do. Trying to push everything to the opposite side. In between that is like speed, strength, strength, speed, power, um, loads of things. Brain's gone fried now, this question, okay? Undulating periodization. So with the block periodization we were talking about there, you got different stages. So building a base, and don't get me wrong, like you talk about like general clients, Potentially wouldn't say to them, right, I'm going to do your periodized program. <laughs> They're like, what? Shut up. What is that? This is such a, what? I train like Olympian? <laughs> no. Any programs toward, any program is periodization. And then you put together, you're building off the basis of something. But the general thing for block is to build a base for accumulation, hypertrophy. Yeah? Build your base, increase the size of the tissue. Yeah? From there, you'd build on top of that because when you've got sometimes something that can produce more force, yeah, which you build on that block, you go into the strength of power and to produce more of it. Okay, so you build on top of that. 
could you go from a cycle of eight to 12 hypertrophy? When you get to strength and power, you're dropping it down from like three to fives. Yeah? Unload and taper periods, you're backing off. We just said something before, 65%, 70, 75, deload. That could be used, yeah? But do general pops need this? Who knows, okay? Going off the creativity question, no. Should we go back a little bit? Create new program ideas without losing clients' interest, adherence. Now I know we talked about something earlier, changing things within the program rather than actual programming, yeah? Movement variations, tempos, rest. Yeah, because that type of program is pretty solid. Creates a base. But when you start to look outside of other things, you, need, you maybe need to ask yourself, like, where are we heading with this? A couple of different things, different to block, would be undulating. 531 is undulating periodization. Okay. People still with me here. Yeah. It's tough, honestly. It still baffles me a little bit. You got a week on fives, a week on threes, a week on ones, and the different percentages, okay? Conjugate periodization, you attack your weaknesses. These are all sort of in the same thing anyway, so it doesn't matter too much, yeah? Could you mix the both? Potentially, yeah? You hammer your weaknesses on building your base, on building your strength and power, you keep them in the background. That's conjugate, you're attacking your weaknesses. In a squat, I get stuck at the bottom. You're gonna do pause squats or um, Anderson squats. Sound, you're putting little factors into each of these. Does that make sense? Cool. We'll talk a little bit more about that anyway. Anyone know what that is? Mike Boyle. Mike Boyle, hates burpees. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy old man, okay. But if you're looking for a good book around it, have a little look at some of his stuff. I'll do some book recommendations once this is finished. That's a phrase he used. So we can focus to that much on the numbers, percentages, tempos, reps, whatever you want to call it. A well-coached bad program would be a poorly coached good program. The devil's in the detail, the ex uh, execution. Does that make sense to everyone? So we talk about before as you're drilling these numbers into people, you having a conversation with them. Are they going to be doing that? Are they fucked? You're trying to nail 90% with them. Like you said before, lifestyle factors are a big thing outside of it. Interesting thought. Okay. Is testing important? What happens once we test and have to structure a plan based on the results? We did touch on testing a little bit before. Well, let's see if we can give a little bit more reasoning behind that. Don't know who that is. It looks like him. Um, it's the cricketer. Freddie Flintoff. Freddie Flintoff, yeah, yeah. Uh, the reason behind choice of exercises during different phases. Good question to you, okay. Again, coaches eye, repetition, max testing. Ask yourselves, are they ready to be doing heavy testing? Depends on the sport though, I think. People take an athletic sport, you want them to be progressive and like endurance wise. So testing may be pretty much needed. Potentially, yeah, yeah. Strength maybe not so much. Yeah, so we're going into that thing about maybe um, what's the goal? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, cool. So, testing for the sake of testing. You want to get better at the sport, not better at the testing. Mm. Know what that means? Yeah? People can get so fixated on testing, like we said before. But, yeah, just getting involved. Like, strength's a journey, training's a journey. It's easy to get poor, like, what's we on at max snatch, jerk. Back squat, but the journey is part of it. Like I don't, like I said before, five, three, one for two and a half years. I loved it. It was a journey. I went like you might have been at a certain pace, like oh, didn't get that reps, but I'm gonna hammer it next week. You got to be involved in it. But sometimes yeah. like you might just say like, um, like kind of train intuitively and go, you know what, I'm feeling good. I'm gonna go for the test. Yeah. And then that's when I'm like, okay, that's your test day. Hundred percent. And then it's more like training intuitively to how you feel on that day. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And so you're usually coaching eye, yeah. like if someone's like having a good day, go, let's go for a test. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like we know that. Again, it goes back to more coaching than programming. Knowing when to do certain things. You could make someone's day by 
dedicating certain movements or pushing them on certain things. If they're not feeling great, you don't push them on weight, you push them on how many reps they get. Just dictate some of the variables or numbers that are there to what they feel or what you see suited for that day. Yeah, it's a people game more than a numbers game. Yeah, cool. Hand in hand. Um, training age and common sense, we've talked about that. John Smith walks in, six months of training, right, one rep max back squat yesterday. What? What the fuck's back squat? <laughs> You've annihilated them, you can't walk the next day. You think that's progressive? How's it progressive you can't get in the gym? Yeah? Knowing just enough of what to do, should be okay, okay? Sound like that teacher of South Park to me. <laughs> Test may reveal though, good point. Point A to start from, structure and perspective. Yeah. I've recently started coaching uh, hockey athletes and another boxer. And it's more remote than anything, but it might give me an idea of how they move. But you could use the coach's eye with that. You get them in and right, I'm gonna ask you to do like so many press-ups. Do you need to test them? You see, they can't do three. Test them for the sake of testing. If you look at the squat pattern and just watching them move, like call it a mobility assessment if you want. Squatting down, using the back control. Are you gonna test them in the squat? Common sense. What's the bad thing about common sense though? So not, not all that common. Exactly, there you go, my man. <laughs> <laughs> common sense isn't common. Funny that, isn't it? Folks on the biggest rocks, lowest hanging fruit. You identify between you or the coaches, staff, medical support. If you've got that delight, if you haven't, it's all on you. But like we said before, specificity. Um, again, I'll use an example. Worked with a box in the past. We went through conditioning tests, smashed them. Could have told them, actually, there's like marathons, like it's not. And um, this is a fighter. Uh, strength, already solid. Tested them on jumps though, like power. Squat jump test, counter movements. A little bit lower than what it should be. What do you think we focus program on? Power. With the other stuff in the background. We just didn't ignore it, but that was the focus. Lowest tangent fruits. What's gonna make him better the more he already is by getting his power up to match his strength and his conditioning. Simple as that. But we know that it also needs to be on the back of that. What, how do you get better at power without sort of doing power? You can potentially get stronger. Because you know that produce force, you need force to produce it from. These are all things to think about, okay? Um, goal setting, coach wants to improve power. I think we just touched on that, so I'm not going to thingy. Use Kira, okay? Let's move forward a little bit. How to program for large amounts of long-term clients? Thought this was a great question, okay? But we might have touched on it a little bit. What did you say that? It's your question, wasn't it? <laughs> Good. Goal setting, do all paths lead to Rome, potentially? Yeah. Creating excitement towards specific training goals through different periods, both following training principles and client goals. Could we have a point of rep records? Could we get it excited about getting a board like this and having all the names on the board, the clients that you got? Such and such at this on squat today. I'm going to push that, I'm going to beat them. This is the type of things you look away from program and it might create a little bit more excitement there. Yeah? Develop structures to lead multiple clients to similar goals with individual, uh, individualization. Coming, in, uh, coming into the exercises, if you've got a large group of clients that want to get stronger, could you potentially meet them in the middle but change certain things that if you've got three or four people who are really good at squats but the other two aren't, what do you think you might need to change? Some of the accessories to get them to that stage, whereas the others might be good, but we could sort of else where the others are better. You could have the main portion of the first two parts of the program very similar, and then they change in the background based on accessories or conditioner. They might have a goal of being fitter, but the first part's the same. Strength, 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 right. He wants to get leaner, boom. He wants to get fitter, conditioner. He wants to get powerfuler. This is his, that makes sense? He might have different columns there. Yeah. Happy with that? Yeah. As I say, if you feel like anything that I've gone through, you haven't really touched on, that you answered the question, give me a shout on Instagram and we'll go from there. 
So this was something that I wanted to finish on. The CEO of Altus, one of the leading institutes of high performance sport in the world. Really, really clever man. In my eyes, one of the top coaches in the world. One of the first things he said, the concepts of planning and programming, you might not think it is, but stealing, copying. How did I get good at programming? By doing other people's programs. 531, Westside, um, Juggernaut, you name it, I've done it. Yeah? No, no idea is really new. If it is, you'd be a Nobel Prize winner. That's what happens when you make a new idea, you know that? Yeah, yeah, get awards, yeah. Just because you're copying other things, it's, it's probably already been done, yeah? Programs have been done, so get involved with them and you'll understand like why people incorporate rest periods, why they're progressing certain things, yeah? Be involved within the programs, yeah? Copy others, it's not a bad thing. Everyone does on social media, yeah? We just don't give credit, that's the worst thing. Seeing this such and such, you didn't create that, that's someone else's, but I'll just let you off, you know what I mean? That's what happens, okay? But I'll send this video because it's really, really, um, what's the word? Humbling to see someone of his status, his stature, being in a position where even to now, he says about when he started and he's still doing it now, he looks at other people for ideas. Why are we all here? You're looking for, not just me, but everyone else in the room. We're coming from different backgrounds. That's a massive thing. Okay? Questions? Happy? That's it. Give yourself a little bit of a round of applause. Okay? Um, I appreciate your time. I hope you took a little bit of value from that, if anything. Something that I think about, and this is not from me, this is from people who've worked their armies. If I go to things like this and I've took like one or two light bulb moments from it, it's worked for me, okay? You might, someone else might have brought something up that's similar to you and you're right, yeah, sounds. That helped, that helped a lot, yeah? If anyone's staying for the next part, it's compound lifts. Um, I'm gonna maybe touch on two, maybe push out three, because I know I've got Olympic lifting towards the end. I wanted to keep it small and compact. Hopefully there's no dodgy emails there, you know what I mean? <laughs> Let's get off that quickly. <laughs> um, yeah, but again, appreciate your time. If I could ask, Jamie's gonna do a little bit of a, um, a recording of people. If, if you're staying, you don't need to do it, but if you're just staying for this one, um, a little bit of like two questions to ask and see what you sort of took from this hour. Um, it's only gonna be 30, 40 seconds. If you're okay getting filmed, um, but we're all coaches, we all love being on camera, you know what I mean? Um, if that's okay, um, if not, appreciate your time. Um, I'll see everyone in the next hour. Try and get uh, prepared for that now, but yeah, thank you, appreciate it. Yeah.